Hola Gurudev y Jai, Pranam to all of you. Good evening. Thanks so much for your presence and the gift of your association. I'm very blessed and fortunate to have the chance of sharing with all of you. Assembly of Vaishnavs here present. So today we are in our last day. I mean, my last day, not yours, in, in the UK. Tomorrow, heading towards sacred Bharat, India. So we are sharing one last session of Harikata. So since this is our concluding meeting, the idea was, okay, this is our last session of Harikata. Let's speak about Harikata in itself. Sometimes we speak Harikata and sometimes we speak about Harikata, which is Harikata. One of the varieties of Harikata is to speak about Harikata. One second. So that has been the choice of today's topic, the glories of Sri Harikatamrita. In other words, the glories of those conversations, those topics about Sri Hari, which are Amrita, as we will explain today, different possibilities of the term Amrita, translated sometimes as nectar, as immortality, as the nectar of immortality, and so on. So this is in itself um, the festival. Sometimes we hear about, okay, we'll have a festival with the Vaishnavs, and there are different notions about what's the, the festival in itself, what's the gist, the essence of the celebration, what's the main event, if you will, in the, in the show, if you will. <laughs> and the conclusion is the main aspect of the celebration is mostly Harikata. The, the, the central aspect of the meeting is to sit down and speak and hear topics about mm, the Lord of our heart, mm, our Prananath, our Praneshwar, mm, about that personality in relation to whom we want to deeply fall in love with, basically, because that's the goal of Bhakti to fall in love with Hari. He himself has a name that lends itself to fall in love with. He's Hari, he's the one who takes away, not only takes away obstacles, but takes away our heart, basically. So, <clears throat> so this is a very important point, especially for all of us who are sadhakas, practitioners, uh, who are in the process of falling in love with God. This is not a joke, this is not a cheap thing, how to fall in love, how to learn how to fall in love with God. One thing is to fall in love as we have a bread experience, uh, but not with God. So try to imagine the, the, the change of center. Now the, the project is to fall in love with God. So he's not an, an ordinary person, He's the supreme person. So it's a whole art, the art of falling in love with Bhagavan. So this is generally termed in Sanskrit Purvarag. Purvarag means the, the, the stage in which we have not met Krishna directly. We have not had what's called Sakshat Darshan or direct meeting, personally, interaction with our Istadev. But we start to hear about him, we start to speak about him, and therefore we start to think about him, and all that put together in a particular way, as we will speak today, implies we start to fall in love with him, by hearing about him, by engaging in Harikata again. So Purvarag means, I've never met Krishna, but I fall in love with him by hearing about him. There are many examples in Shastra about this. Rukmini, here I have Rukmini Dwarkadish, very beautiful 
Darshan, so Rukmini, since she's present here, we have to honor her presence. <laughs> she was a famous example about that. She heard about the qualities of Krishna. She never met Krishna in person, but she heard enough to fall in love with her and to write a letter to Krishna asking, please kidnap me. And I want to give myself to you fully. So I never met you, but I've heard about you. I've heard Harika Tamrita, and this is, was enough for me to have my heart stolen, basically. That's the God we worship. Someone who will enter in our heart no matter how many obstacles are there in the way and how many obstacles we ourselves may still present on his way to trying to <laughs> capture our heart. As Srila Bhaktira Kaksidar Dev Goswami Maharaj has put very nicely, it's not only that we are looking for Krishna, but he is looking for us. And basically that's what makes uh, our, our own search have some meaning. He, 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 he had the initiative through the sadhus, through the parampara, and we are trying to reciprocate with that. Like this famous story of the two policemen in India, my Guru Maharaj likes to share this very nice narration where they say, well, we are worshiping a God, Krishna, who is a thief. Hari also is a way of saying the thief. So we, got, we worship the thief God. It kind of sounds like an oxymoron. No? Like on one side you have God. Who is your God? What's his business? He's a thief. Okay. And they are policemen. No? So the policeman is trying to not promote thievery. So one of them were one telling what the other. I think it's a problem that our God is a thief. You know? it, it kind of gets in the way of our, our own job. Mm -hmm. And the other one, of course, took a more substantial take and said, no, no, it's not a problem at all because the nature of a thief and a good thief <laughs> is that he or she won't care for high walls or locked doors. Whatever it may be on the way, the thief will go straight to whatever he wants to, to have to take his reward, the ultimate reward. So all those high walls, all those locked doors are exactly what we have built around our heart in order to prevent someone from entering there. But our hope is that Krishna is a thief. No matter how high the wall, how locked the door, how many passwords we have used, Krishna will be able to cross them all and reach our heart. So that's our hope, he is a thief. So in this way, the second policeman replied, making this point. Hari, that's the idea of Krishna. He's Hari. He's the one who, who takes away our heart. And one of the most uh, immediate and user-friendly and charming ways he's taking away our hearts is through Harikata. Through Harikata. By hearing about him, his nature is so charming, so enchanting, so captivating. His Hari again, that by hearing about him, even without noticing, we start to fall in love with that person in a very organic and natural way. So, Hari Katambrita Mahotsa, this is what we are celebrating here. Our main celebration is to speak about Hari. That's, that's in, in itself the festival, because Krishna is described in Shastra as himself being a festival. He himself is a festival of beauty. He himself is a festival of harmony. He himself is a festival of love and grace. His very person is a festivity. So to speak about him, about him who is a festival, that's a festival, basically. So Krishna is a festival, and we organize a festival to speak about the festival. <laughs> so to speak about he who is the ultimate form of, of celebration. And that's we are, why we are all so much fond of kirtan. Kirtan, some, some way of translating kirtan is celebration. Why? Because our istadev, the person we worship, the person we are trying to fall in love with, is in itself a festival. So we celebrate that opportunity. And so many things we can say about him. That's the point. One of the names of Krishna is Uttama Shloka, or he who is praised by the most selected poetry. So it means no matter how refined language, how perfect usage of words you get, 
he will never do justice to all the things that you can say about him. But we try. We try. Ikshatina Shabdat, say Vedanta Sutra. You can never speak. I mean, you can say anything. What do you can say about the divine with your limited words? But you can never say enough, we will say. We will try our best. He of his who is multi glorious, as we say yesterday, Urugaya. He who is not only glorious, but multi glorious. So, Harikata Amrita Mahotsa. This is what we are doing here. This is the festival. Sometimes we have this uh, maybe relative idea for something to be a festival, there has to be like spotlights or neon lights and you know, some rock band playing or, or, or some specific famous people being there or some big stuff going on. But for us, the festival is Harikata coming from sincere hearts to sincere hearts. You know, that type of interaction, that's worthy of celebration. That's the greatest event that is being honored by great, great personalities. Even though we may not be seen here and what we may be expecting, oh, we were hoping that 108 people may come or something. I remember one famous story when Srila Prabhupada was in, I don't remember in which country you may know better than me. Here? Okay, so that's much more, the example is even more, much more applicable. <laughs> so he was here, one of the very first, first, I imagine, events. And the devotees were organizing some public talk for him. So he was, he came, he gave the talk, but in the audience, it, it was not full packed room, if you will, as the devotees maybe were expecting and wanted to to offer Prabhupada a full room with whatever, 16,108 people or something like that. So at the end of the lecture, they went to Prabhupada and say, oh Prabhupada, excuse, excuse me, excuse us, no, sorry. We wanted to, but there were not so much people coming. There were people, but they were having their own idea of how it should be. And Srila Prabhupada looked at them and say, what do you mean, but no people coming? I, there was not the moon in the audience. It was Vyasadev. This was that personality and that other personality. This, 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 this. Because when Harikata is invoked by pure devotee, of course, like Srila Prabhupada, naturally all the assembly of, of all the parade of all parampara is there listening. That's the nature of Harikata when it is spoken by, by a great soul. Always something new will be there. What better example we have than Srimad Bhagavatam itself? The main session of Srimad Bhagavatam has been spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami to Pariksit Maharaj. So who was in the audience? Apart from Pariksit Maharaj, there was a whole parade of great yogis and sages and devotees from different lineages. And amongst them was, for example, whom? Vyasadev, Srila Vyasadev, and so you know where my point goes. <laughs> Vyasadev is Sukadev Swami, father and Bhagavad Guru. But he was there in the audience listening to his son and disciple speaking about the Bhagavad because he knew whenever some realized soul is opening his mouth, her mouth to share Harikata, something new will come, something charming, something incredible will come. So Vyasadev was there, and not only Sri Vyasa, but Narad Muni as well, who was Vyasa's guru. So try to imagine the situation. And Sukadev Goswami was speaking, and his Guru Dev and his Param Guru Dev were in the audience hearing. Because they, they didn't have this type of consideration. Oh no, no, he's my this my disciple, he's junior to me. I don't have nothing to learn from them. This is not how the great personalities think. They are able to grasp the essence, Saragrahi. The same thing happened with Pariksit himself. Pariksit Maharaj was the king of the world, an adult person with full experience, a great sage who left everything behind in, in his quest for the ultimate truth, looking for a guru in his last week of life, as we know. And when he was looking for a guru, you can imagine it, the emperor of the whole planet he won't accept everyone and everyone and anyone as a guru. But he was a Saragrahi, essence seeker at the same time. So when he saw Sukadev Goswami appearing out of the blue in the scene, Jadrik Chaya, by his own will, 
and he was like a naked boy of 16 years old, right? he recognized he's my guru. So try to imagine, my, try to get my point. It's not about external credentials. No, it's not that, oh no, he's younger than me. I'm older. He cannot be my guru. No, he's not wearing clothes. What's going on here? <laughs> like Sukade was kind of like an abadut. So many external considerations that for someone with real vision, um, are not a main consideration. So this idea of Harikata, whenever sacred discourse is invoked with honesty, authenticity, sincerity, the whole parampara becomes present and blesses the event. Maybe invisibly, maybe again, externally when we think, oh, we are like just 15 fellows seated here in this room, no big issue. But again, like Srila Prabhupada will say, Yas is there, Narada is there, all these great personalities are coming to, to bless our endeavors if there is sincere interaction between speaker and hearer. And this is one of the main practices for us as, as Vaishnavs, as Gaudiya Vaishnavs, Harikata. Harikata is almost, I will say, the most important thing because it's what Sadhu Sangha is all about at the same time. So many ways, so many times we hear. Sadhu Sangha is the essence of everything. Sadhu Sangha is the all in all. The most important thing to, for the beginning of bhakti, the most important thing when we reach the goal in bhakti. Krishna Bhakti Janma Mold, how is Sadhu Sangha? Krishna, jam, Krishna Prem Janma Tenho Punar Moki Anga. No? Krishna bhak, Sadhu Sangha is the root cause for the birth of bhakti in one's life. So bhakti comes from bhakti, bhakti comes from Sadhu Sangha. And when you reach Krishna Prem, Punar Mukya Anga, the Sadhu Sangha remains Mukya Anga, a main aspect of the practice. It's not that, okay, now I'm a Prem Bhakta, I don't need Sadhu Sangha any longer. Mm. But Sadhu Sangha is crucial at every stage. Mm. But the, the point is, what's Sadhu Sangha about? Sadhu Sangha is not about just like social dynamics. Now let's get together and have fun for a while. And, socialize a little bit. How are you doing so long? Nice, see you, see you soon. Sadhu Sangha Kijai. But it's about getting together for Harikata, for speaking and hearing about the object of our love, of, of, about our common idea. Because if we don't get together to go deep, deeper into our common ideal, why we're how, how much together we are getting <laughs> when we say we are getting together but together for what for promoting not a common ideal not a universal value so it's, in that sense we are not really getting together we are getting separated and distant from each other even though externally it seems we are quite close physically <laughs> and we went we may we met at this place and we had pizza and things like this we got together and so on <laughs> But actually the real proximity has to do with how much we are willing to increase our commitment with our with the common cause, as we spoke the other day, with our ideal, our deeper ideal. So that's Sadhu Sangha, that's Harikata. To speak about Krishna, it's not just only like professional discourse. Okay, Krishna this, Krishna that, did that, he's like this, okay, go Hari. You know? but, but to try to do it in such a way that we see our hearts transformed. We experience some form of conversion, constant conversion, constant attraction, constant transformation. Harikata is not information, it's transformation. There is some information, but it tends, it has the intention of creating transformation, a revolution, as the Bhagavatam says, basically. So, so and, and the point is, this Sadhu Sangha, again, has a lot to do with Harikata. You take, uh, you take out Harikata from Sadhu Sangha, and the only thing that remains is called Asad Sangha. Asad Sangha, which is something that our Acharya have uh, cautioned us against. Asad Sangha Tyag E Vaishnav Achar Mahaiprabhu say. What's the main Achar, the main behavior of the Vaishnav? He or she will avoid Asad Sangha. Asad Sangha means, let's say, connection with the unreal, 
basically, get together to go deeper into our illusion, <laughs> to get farther and farther from reality, getting together for that. That's a satsanga, that's totally unbecoming. And the opposite of a satsanga is satsanga or sadhu sangha. So for example, when Raghunath Das Goswami, our Prayojan Tatpachara, he asked Mahaprabhu, give me a personal instruction. So the very first thing that Sri Chaitanya Dev said to Das Goswami Ji was Gramya Katana Sunivi Gramya Varta Nagaive. Indirectly, he praised Hari Kata. He said, do not ever speak gossip and do not ever hear gossip. Of course, this doesn't mean only do not gossip, but indirectly means speak. You have a tongue, you have to do something with that. Do not do this with your tongue, but the indirect implication is do this. And do this means Harikata. Again, embrace Harikata Mrita. Do not gossip is another way. How, long, how, how will I be able not to gossip? It's not an easy thing, especially in Kali Yuga, especially with social media. <laughs> so how to engage that organ that takes me to gossip, mostly my tongue, by engaging it in a higher way, by giving my tongue a higher taste. In the form of prashad, for sure, <laughs> and in the form of harikata, which is another form of prashad, of relishing the remnants of what has been given to us. No? Prahlad Mara says, material life is puna punas charipita charbananam to chew that thing that has been already been chewed by others, which doesn't seem too attractive. Like if I give you, how do you call this thing that you chew? A gum, a gum. So I chew that for one hour and it's for you now. I was like, okay, <laughs> I appreciate the, the attitude, but I don't know. <laughs> but Harikata in its own ways, like it, 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 it follows the same principle, but in another way we are hearing Harikata speaking by us to us by the sadhus, and they have heard that from their own gurus, and they have heard that, and they have chewed that, ruminated on that, processed that, digested that, and they share with us the chewed product, if you will. And we are to take that and have our own experience and so on. That's what Parampara is about. So to speak Harikata is the very first thing, again, that Mahaprabhu told Raghunath Das Goswami, indirectly, by saying, do not gossip. I mean, if you really are attentive with someone tells you do not gossip, you, you won't conclude, he told me not to gossip. Like, strictly, he told me to speak about that which is the opposite of gossip. You know? Like when we say to the devotees, I don't know, uh, do not be violent. What does it mean ultimately? What's the positive side to that instruction? Be compassionate. And that's so many implications, so many layers of that. Not to do this, not to do that. That's only half of the, of the equation. What to do? What's a positive, progressive side to all of this? So again, the tongue is the most difficult sense to control, as Thakur Bhaktivinoda has said. So we have to give tongue an engagement. But you will become Rupa Goswami say, try to control the impulse, the urge of speech, which doesn't mean stop speaking. Although sometimes, if we don't have anything good to say, it's better to cancel the tongue function for a moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes one, one, some, some disciples of Prabhupada went to one yogi was, who was doing Mona Brata, which means not speaking at all for maybe five decades or something, <laughs> strong bow. And he was writing some things when he needed in a, was it chalkboard? So the devotees went in a little bit naive way, like trying to challenge the yogi. Like implying, you, you are not speaking anything, but higher than not speaking anything is just always speak about Krishna. Which is okay. it's right, but if you say that, you have to be walking the talk. <laughs> so the yogi heard them, and he wrote in the chalkboard, chalkboard? Say, and are you doing that? He put. <laughs> no? Like implying, if you are not doing that, sometimes it's better not to say anything. But when, when you know what to say, of course, you can be 24-7 engaged in speaking about positive content, harikata. But again, that may not be always the case. So we need to avoid at all costs this karmikata, this 
gossip, which is a great part of this Asad Sangha. So again, Sadhu Sangha, what we are trying to experience now, getting together, associating with each other, is all about Harikata. You take off Harikata, no longer we have Sadhu Sangha, we have a social circle of who knows what. The Bhagavatam says that Susru So Shradhanasya Basudiva Kataruji Sen Mahatsivayabi Pra Punya Tirtani Sivana. He's mentioning here in the very beginning the Bhagavad is saying, which for us is the main source of Harikata. So when we speak about Harikata, naturally we go to the Bhagavad. And the Bhagavatam is saying by increasing or by associating with sadhus, by embracing sadhu sangha. Vasudeva Kata Ruchi, your taste for Vasudeva Kata or Hari Kata will increase. So this is the main point. What's the result of Sadhu Sangha? Your taste for Hari Kata will increase, which of course means will increase because in Sadhu Sangha there is Hari Kata. You follow? It's not that I associate with devotees, there's no Hari Kata whatsoever, but the result of that is my taste for Hari Kata increased. How will that happen if there's no Harikata in Sadhu Sangha? So the Bhagavatam is saying, by Sadhu Sangha, Harikata, Ruchi, the taste for that becomes upgraded. Why? Because in Sadhu Sangha, that's the main thing that is going on, to speak about the object of our love. And, and, and to speak about, of course, not always necessarily directly about that, because we can also speak about our particular personal situation, the stages we are in, and many so-called relative details that we need to solve in our devotional project to become uh, integral, whole persons, human beings, so we can be a better lover of God. So directly, it doesn't sound like you are speaking about Krishna, narrating Krishna Lila, as in the Bhagavatam, it is depicted, but you are speaking about all those things that, that by embracing them will take you to take full advantage of that direct Harikata or Krishna Lila. So by extension, that's a form of Harikata also. So it's important to be aware of the different nuances of Harikata. It's not only we sit and speak about Rasa Lila, the Nukasura Lila, whatever Lila. We can also speak about how we have as Sadakas, as practitioners, can navigate the different waters and chapters of what all that it means to be a practitioner you follow so it's and, and that will be a very one of the main ways also to show amongst ourselves affectionate affection for each other Rupa Goswami says, to give gifts to receive gifts to open the heart reveal our minds and receive others hearts and minds all this has a lot to do with Harikata. Harikata in itself is a gift we can give and receive. And that implies opening our heart, giving our hearts to others. Krishna very beautifully describes Sadhu Sangha in the second of the Chatur Shloki. The Gita Machita Madgata Aprana Bodhayanta Parashparam Katayanta Stamamnitan Tusyanti Charamantichan. He's mentioning there, my devotees always get together. They always think about me. They always speak about me. Their lives revolve around me. They enlighten one another by speaking about me. And by doing that, they nourish each other and they develop a taste amongst each other for what they are speaking about. So that's the very definition, as we see, of Sadhu Sangha. And immediately speak, including Harikata. You cannot speak about Sadhu Sangha without immediately saying, Harikata, 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 <laughs> one point. Mm. So this Harikata, like Sri Hari Nam, is non different from Sri Hari. That's a very important point. Why Harikata is so important? Because whenever Harikata is invoked, mm. Sri Hari is present there. Mm. That the famous story of Ramanuja Acharya, or some followers of him, I think. There were two of them, three of them speaking among them, like in a cave in Chaturmasya, like this time, torrential rains were there. They were not able to go out of the cave. And they, the three of them, started to share their hearts and to speak about, in a confidential way, about the object of their love. And at one point, the three of them have a, let's say, a, a simultaneous 
epiphany, com confirmation, like we are three here, but all of us feel the presence of a fourth person here. There is someone else here. And the, the other one say, I feel the same. There is a fourth person. And the third person say, I feel the same. There is a fourth person here. And the three of them, of course, look at, the, at each other and conclude, yes, this fourth person is that person we are speaking about. Now, where is the Bhagavan? He has become present in the form of Harikata. This is what Sri, Sri Radha says famously in, in the Brahma Gita. We have been studying this along the last month. Dustya Jastat Katarta. When she, she's suffering in separation, terrible separation, when Krishna is no longer in Vrindavan. And she basically at one point she starts to glorify Harikata. And she says, Dustya Jastat Katarta. It's very difficult to live, not to say impossible, actually, to live without speaking about Krishna. He's the very kata artha, the, the ultimate purpose of all speech faculty. And for all of us in Vrindavan, she's speaking, all our speech faculty naturally goes to him and converges in him. We cannot, we don't know how not to do that. <laughs> she will express that like, we don't have that capacity, but actually we'll say, that's that's the capacity in itself. <laughs> I don't know how not to speak about Krishna. That's not the fault. <laughs> the fault. Like the gopis many times think, okay, let's try to forget Krishna for a moment. He's giving us so much headache on a daily basis. So let's try to not think about him. So they sit, sit like joginis and start to meditate and concentrate and make their maximum effort. And they have very powerful yogic capacities <laughs> direct their minds somewhere else but the point is for them there is no somewhere else there is no second option in their minds in their hearts there is not something else apart from him so after a few minutes they look at each other were you able to forget krishna for a minute for 10 seconds for a nanosecond mm -hmm. the other one mm -hmm. so they express themselves we are not capable of forgetting Krishna. It's our lack of capacity. And we will offer in our pranam to their lack of capacity, <laughs> praying for that to come someday. So in separation of Krishna, Shirada will say this, she will say, in separation from Krishna, somehow I'm maintaining my life. I have not died. Of course we know Shirada is not dying in separation from Krishna because she knows if I die, that will make Krishna suffer. And I don't want to make Krishna suffer. Even the thought that Krishna can suffer tortures me. So I somehow or other I will sustain my life in separation. So basically she says, I can survive without Krishna, but I cannot survive without Krishna Gata. That's actually what keeps me alive, she will say. So I can live without Krishna, but not without Krishna Gata. And that's why she cannot but speak with Krishna every single moment. And every, because again, Krishna Kata is non-different from Krishna. So Krishna is not there in one sense, but Krishna is there in another sense in the form of Harikata. And, and that's what gives her and everyone his devotees her life back. This is the famous other verse of the Bhagavatam, which the gopis are mentioning. Maybe this is the most famous verse of the Gopi Gita the famous song of the gopis in separation from krishna the gopis say there tabaka tamritam tapta jivanam kabibiriditam kalma sapaham shravanam angalam sri madatatam bhubigrinantiye gurida jana so this is one of 19 verses called Gopi Gita. So here the Gopis are saying, Tabaka Tambritam, they are singing to Krishna in separation. He disappeared from the Ras Mandal. Tabaka Tambritam, there the term Katambrita comes. Your Kata, Tabakata, your Kata is Ambrita. Ambrita means, again, nectar or given, giver of immortality. Tapta Jivanam, I'm giving the general verb, interpretation of the verse very briefly. There's another type, layers of esoteric interpretations shared by Vishwanath Chakrabarti, Thakur, very beautiful, but no time today, <laughs> too much. The Tavalkatamritam Tattajivanam. 
your kata is a giver of life for those whose lives are being scorched in the fire of material existence. So it's like a huge relief and shelter, giver of real life, new life, kathari kata, this life giver. This harikata is spoken, praised by the topmost sages and poets. And among other effects, harikata is cleansing the heart from all misgivings, cleaning all obstacles. Shravanamangalam Srimadatatam. It's very auspicious to hear Shravanamangalam and Srimadatatam. It possesses full power, full beauty the beauty of power, of the power of beauty, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> to, to create a, a, a crucial change, comprehensive change in the heart. And therefore, bhubhigrinantiye je buridajana. Therefore, being harikata, such a gift, such a blessing, non different from Hari, those who are dedicated to share harikata are the most compassionate and generous welfare workers that we can find on earth. That's the highest form of charity, the Gopis conclude. Highest form of charity is to spread Harikata. Mm -hmm. This is a very important verse of the Bhagavatam. Mahaprabhu loved this verse too much. This was the verse that Rataparudra Maharaj recited to him mm -hmm. when he conquered the king of Puri, appears as a devotee, and he reached Mahaprabhu finally and chanted this verse. Mahaprabhu started to embrace him and to dance, dance in ecstasy. Mm -hmm. So, Harikata Amrita. So, Harikata means, again, Amrita. Harikata is nectar. Nectar means it's sweet not only as a means, as a sadhana, as a practice, but as a sadhya in itself, as a goal. For us, Harikata, as we mentioned, is not only a method, but it's also a destiny. It's not only a bridge, if you will, but a place to, to stay and reside eternally, forever. And it represents the ultimate type of Amrita. Sometimes this term Amrita is present in different parts of, of the Shastra. But here it refers to a very specific type of nectar or sweet substance. For example, in Shastra it is described the nectar of, of immortality. Sometimes they say so-called immortality that, it's, that it is found in, in this heavenly planet, the Soma, the, or the nectar of the experience of Swarga, or the heavenly planets, which is a, a, a heavenly delight that may last for what it may seem eternity from our perspective, <laughs> but from the perspective of eternity, whatever enjoyment you may have in the heavenly planets is just like a, a blinking from my kumta, if you will. So it's not, not a great thing. And eventually it's over and you have to return. So it's Amrita only between quotation mark. It's not that nectarian and it's not immortal for sure. Because Amrita means Amrita, eternal, non-mrita, non-death. Then we have the nectar of liberation or moksha, mokshamrita, which again is a nectar that has more to do with stop suffering, stopping suffering, entering into the plane of eternality. There is a place for that immortality, but Still, it does not speaking about the positive content, the nectar of lila, the nectar of loving interaction, the sweetness of the different types of uh, relationships we can have with Bhagavan in terms of bhakti. And then we have the last ultimate form of amrita or nectar, which is harikatamrita, which are, we are speaking here. So harikatamrita is a current, divine current of the comes in the form of sound, remember? Sound is a more subtle and powerful current that can come to our lives. So Harikata enters in our ears, and from our ears, it may pass through our head, we, it, makes, we may, it makes sense to us, and from there converges into the ocean of our heart, conquering all the different directions. That's why Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta will say, I won't ask anything from you, but one thing, he said, just give me your ears. Lend me your ears, and nothing else. But he knew that's the, <laughs> the place from which everything else will be. All the different corners of our inner being will be conquered. Mm -hmm. So if we lend our ears, 
for here in Harika Dai, if we allow Harika Dai to be poured, poured, poured in our, in the cups of our ears, as sometimes described, the nectar enters into those cups. Eventually, all of our functions will be overflowed. That's how it, the Srimad Bhagavatam begins. But here in the Bhagavatam, with sincere attitude from a sincere source, immediately Krishna establishes himself in one's heart. Of course, immediately may, may mean one, two lifetimes, you reach the ultimate goal as we spoke this day. That's immediately in comparison to uncountable lifetime being wandering who knows where and how. So in this way, the, 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 the Harikata, this Harikatamrita, it's not only medicine, but it's also, as my Guru Maharaj would like to say, it's also food. In certain stage of our life, some things we will take to get cured from certain sickness. But when we are healthy, that same substance still is nourishing us from another side. Still being healthy, we can take that. It's like an Ayurvedic medicine that you can take when you are sick and when you are healthy. Mm. This is a famous verse from the Bhagavatam in this regard that I may like to share. We have some minutes with your permission. This very famous verse, fourth verse, first chapter, 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. This is one of the verses that it is said Vyasadev gave to the woodcutter when he sent the woodcutter to bring Sukadev Goswami back home. When Sukadev Goswami disappeared, jumped from the room of, of his mother, being 16 years old. <laughs> Don't ask me how he did to remain 16 years in the womb. <laughs> but he went right to the forest, not, not attracted by anything in this world. And, and Vyasadev saw his son running, 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 and he thought he's so qualified. To, to receive Bhagavad Kata, to become a vessel of Harikatamprita, and to continue with this current in the future that I want him to return home. He wanted him to return home, not because of like parental, paternal attachment, but because of attachment to the Bhagavatam, attachment to allow the current of the Bhagavatam to overflow the world. <laughs> so that he was concerned for all of us. He was thinking for all of us when he was chasing after Sukadev, son, son, return, return to me. So he was not successful in bringing Sukadev back, but he sent some woodcutter to the forest and told him, taught him some Bhagavad verses. I need to say by our acharyas, this was one of them. So in this verse, it is a Nibrita Tarshir Upagiyamanat. Pavosada Chutra Mano Birhaman. Kauta Mashloka Gunanunabat. Umambira Jita. This Bhagavatam is so, this source of Harikata, again, this is a glorification to Harikata and to the Bhagavatam at the same time. Nibrita Tarshair, those who have no Trishna, no, not Krishna, Trishna, Trishna means uh, thirst. So those who have no thirst, in other words, for this world, those who are not attracted for this world, like Sukadev Goswami and Atmaram, totally self-satisfied. Upagiya mana. Nonetheless, they engage their functions in singing about Bhagavan, in Harikata. This is kind of a parallel to the Admaram verse of the Bhagavatam. Babo Sadat Chotra Mano Viraman. And why they do so? Because Babo Sadaj, because this Harikata, Harikatamrita, to begin with, is Bhava Sadat, is a, a medicine to cure Bhava. Bhava in this case means material existence. So we spoke in Finland. Bhava with long, with short A is Bhava. And Bhava with long A, Bhava, means ecstasy. And Bhava means shorter type of existence. Bhava, Bhava means wider, broader experience, divine existence, divine love. And Bhava means samsara. <laughs> so the, the Harikata is a medicine for samsara, but by hearing such a discourse, the mind becomes totally pleased. It's a medicine, 
but it's not like most medicine. Generally, most medicines have bitter taste, are not really sweet and pleasing and charming. This medicine is totally sweet. And not only that, as we mentioned, but whenever you get cured from your whatever sickness in this world, as one friend of mine will say, all of us are myaholic. No? <laughs> you have alcoholic, you have addicted to this, uh, we're all of Maya Shaktiholic. <laughs> so whenever uh, at the point that you get cured from your addiction, that medicine, which already was sweet, now starts to have another function and becomes food because becomes starts to nourish you. Like as mentioned, there are certain Ayurvedic medicine like ashwagandha or some others that you can take when you are sick for a particular reason, but when you are totally healthy, you can still take them because they are nourishers and they help you to keep fit and so, so many other functions. So Harikata is something like this. You know? You embrace Harikata in the state of sickness in the material world, but you get cured for that and you still embrace Harikata. Now Harikata became something more, even, not something less. No. Again, in the beginning, that was more of a means to stop suffering, let's say, a method to transcend illusion. But when you get, get to that point, you realize, oh, now Harikata is showing its real face to me. It's appearing as the goal in itself. It's a goal unto itself. It's a, a total, uh, again, elixir. Sometimes also this topic, this term has been Rasayana Kata. Satam Prasangam Mabhavidya Sambhido Rasayana Kata. Rasayana is like elixir. You have the word elixir, like a tonic, like an elixir that not only cures you, but like inspires you in a particular direction, gives you a particular taste. Mm. But of course, for this to happen, and with this I'm finishing my today's discourse, it's important that we hear with the proper attitude and from the proper source. Mm. Scripture will say, if you hear Harikata from a proper source, and from with, with improper attitudes, like, like drinking milk that has been touched by the lips of, of a serpent. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it sounds nourishing, but it will be poisonous mm -hmm. because there is no real uh, attitude, basically. This is the famous story of Gorky Chordas Babaji when someone was given Bhagavad Saptaha. This is a classical exposition of the Bhagavatam for seven days, like trying to replicate the original seven day exposition between Sukadeva and Pariksha. And he was a famous uh, exposer of, of this type of presentation, so everyone went, and they invited Guru Kishore Das Babaji. So he went, so after the whole like session finished, they asked Guru Kishore Das Babaji, so what do you think about Harikata? <laughs> and he said, I think that you should purify the whole room with cow dung, <laughs> which is an antiseptic substance, which is used for purifying something that has been contaminated. So everyone was like, he had this kind of reply, you know, like Abadut like replies. It was not the statu quo type of, very nice, very nice. <laughs> he said, bring some cow dung, he said. <laughs> and I say, why cow dung? Uh, why pur purifying the place? But the Bhagavatam has been spoken for a week. Which, which further need we have of purifying the environment? The sound of the Bhagavatam, the Harikat. Gorky Shor say Harikata Bhagavatam. I never heard that. The only thing I heard was rupee, rupee, rupee for seven days. No. Money, money, money to purify the place. So the, the meaning of this was the person out, outwardly was speaking the Bhagavatam. But the background of that was he was making business with the sacred revelations. He was using the Bhagavatam. He was using Harikata as a tool to gain money and to live with that money to lead a life separate from what Harikata is about. That's an important point. I remember once I was given one series of one study of the Bhagavatam that took like six months. And we were asking some donation for those who want to participate in the, in the, in the series. 
of course, if someone will tell, I don't have any money, they were invited to participate, but it was some contribution for, for the cost. It was, it was not for, for me to travel to Cancun and have my private vacations on an island or something. But the point is, someone read, there was some flyer and they said some contribution and someone wrote to say, you're asking money for the Bhagavatam and that's an offense to the Bhagavatam. Because it is mentioned in the scripture, you shouldn't make a business out of reciting Shastra, out of the Bhagavatam, Harikata. So of course, I personally never thought I'm, make, I'm making a business because whatever money was, Lakshmi was coming, it was not money, Lakshmi. I mean, it was not for me, it was being used in the service of in the ashram and the seva of Thakurji and so on. But just in case I spoke with my Guru Maharaj and said, this happened, Guru Maharaj, you know, I'm giving this series of lectures, we ask this contribution and someone was complaining, disturbed that you're making a business, this is an offense, aparad to Harikata. And, 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 he, I, and I really appreciated his reply. Not because I was the one involved or something, but because of the point he made. I say, the, off, the offense is not about asking for money or not, but again, making a business with that. It means you ask for money and that money you are using in, in something different from what the Bhagavatam is teaching. But if you are trying to align your lifestyle with the ideals of the Bhagavatam, there's not, not only there's no problem by asking money, but actually by asking money, those who are giving that money are getting purified by doing that because that money is being invested in, in a lifestyle that tries to follow the Bhagavad. Of course, easier said than done. One has to have, be sincere and honest. <laughs> but that's the, the principle of the idea to follow. So externally may seem one thing. Externally may seem, again, like this, these two examples I gave. On one side, there's a great pundit speaking the Bhagavad and no Sanskrit sings all the verses in three different ragas and everything is totally like paka <laughs> and knows the Bhagavatam by heart, maybe even. And one may say, wow, this is this is Harikata. But the, behind the curtains, there's there's a separate, there's a clash, there's a separate lifestyle. There's not a, a, a connection with what I'm saying. I'm not walking the talk, basically. So that's not Harikata. And on the other side, you can have the other example. It seems you're charging money for that. It seems you're making a business. But maybe if there is proper attitude and sincerity, everyone is getting purified by that type of interaction. So again, it's not, we have to go beyond the form to really understand what's going on in the name of Harikata. From the side of the one who is speaking, and of course, from the side of, the ones who are here, we are not to approach Harikata again in a in a way that I want to be enter entertained, for example. I want just to have a good time or something, but there is a commitment here in Harikata. It's divine discourse, passing through the sadhu for Ampura is present there, trying to reach our hearts and trying to create a particular impact in our heart. So we have to be willing to that. Every time we sit for Harikata, we should be willing to I want to experience conversion here. I'm willing to that because if not, I'm just coming for what? For hearing something that I, I already know, something that will entertain me, something that may just distract me for a while. No, we want to be committed with the idea. And that's how we really have to approach the, the sacred text, for example, as we were speaking yesterday, I think with, with one devotee you know, about the, for example, the Bhagavad, and again, our main source of Harikata is not a book. No, it's not just a book that is there, you take, you open, you read. Strictly speaking, the Bhagavatam is not to be read. The Bhagavatam is to be relished. That's the invitation that the Bhagavatam is given from the very onset. It's very onset. Third verse, what does it say? Nigama kalpa taror kalitam palam sukam mukadam brita drava samjuttam this Bhagavatam is not a book, it's a fruit. It's not any fruit. It's the most mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic knowledge. And it's Amrita, it's a nectarian. Again, the word Amrita comes here. And it's coming to us through the mouth of Sukadev Goswami, who like a parrot, he's biting, biting a fruit and making it even sweeter. 
So in Parampara, the narrations are passing from one sadhu to another, become increasing their charm. And Vibhata Bhagavatam Rasa Malaya. Oh, you relish this Bhagavatam. Even after, immort after immortality, this is a post-liberated status. The pact is a post-liberated status. Something to do after immortality, my Guru Mahesh will say. Gaudiya Vaishnavism specializes about post-liberated life. <laughs> we have so many things to, to say about what's going on once you enter immortality, which is like, wow. I mean, most people cannot even start to speak about reaching immortality. No? The Gaudiya will say, we we'll like to speak about what's going on, immortality upwards, if you will. <laughs> so the Bhagavatam from the birth is very honest in saying, try to relish the Bhagavatam, not read the Bhagavatam. It's not just a book to read. No? It's a fruit to relish. <laughs> and ultimately you will realize it's a place to stay. My Guru Maharaj would like to say, again, the Bhagavatam is not a book. The Bhagavatam is a place of residence, eternal residence. And if you look closely to the Bhagavatam, if you really enter into that reality, at one point you will find, oh, there is one blank page here in the book. And it was not a print, printing error, <laughs> but the blank page is for me to fill with my own story, basically, with my own life of Bhakti. That will become part of the story of the Bhagavatam because the Bhagavatam is about Krishna and the devotees love for Krishna. So we are trying to be one of those devotees who have some love for Krishna. Remember, Harikata is about hearing about Krishna, falling in love with Krishna. So eventually we will fall in love with Krishna and that will begin the whole love story. That will be one of the pages of the Bhagavatam that is constant, constantly expanding and growing. So this is the way to conceive and approach this notion of Harikata. No, it's not just a book, it's not just a static thing but ecstatic it's not passive it's living active and it's again inviting to all of us to to be part of that to be part of this festival of this celebration so the very fact that we have the chance to speak about that is for us a source of great fortune and blessing and, and that's the celebration that's the festival so thank you very much to all of you for giving me the chance of <laughs> sharing some harikata some words about harikata and because without your presence and your in, in deep attention, I have nothing to do over here. So it's a 50-50 it's equation where both, both parties are equally crucial in this project. So I think we are almost in time, but I don't know if there is any question we may address relatively quickly because we will share some Hari Kirtan also in complement with Hari Kata before finishing. And if there is any any question that may leave you without sleep until my next visit to the UK, please present that. I don't want to create any <laughs> insomnia in the audience here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, maybe it's a little bit long worded, but I try to write it down and try to convey what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I imagine it's probably a question that you've been asked before. Maybe it's quite a common question. So, like first, thank you for all of these talks in this last week. Um, everything that you're speaking about today in terms of like the, the transformation effect of the Harikata and the Rasayam, I, you know, really feel it practically, you know, from all of these things that you're speaking about. And yesterday in your talk, you mentioned this example of like the conductor and the orchestra, you know, if we surround ourselves in an mm -hmm. environment of bhakti, then we can be all, all that we can be. Um, and you mentioned about saintly people being like the pollinators of the hearts, you know, because they're the bearers of bhakti. So, um, yeah, as I say, we, we, you know, we can see this and we experience it practically in these times, in these moments, when we are in Sadhu Sangha, and for example, so you know, when we have some like retreat with our Guru Maharaj, things like that, in these moments, it's just sort of very clear. I imagine where the question goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you can. So, uh, yeah, when these times are ending, like we naturally feel sad, but also have a kind of a, not exactly a fear, but a, a kind of a fear, you know, that. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna have.
have the same consciousness, you know, after these times are over, um, you know, rather that we'll become overwhelmed again by material energy, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, it seems that even though every, we have our daily sadhana that we do, you mm -hmm. know, try and try mm -hmm. grounds daily, read something daily, um, you know, hear classes, but it's, it's not the same effect. Maybe it's because in these times we are more completely absorbed mm -hmm. with everything else mm -hmm. becomes insignificant. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. But so my, my question is really like, what advice would you give to like, to not lose optimism or to feel that, you know, we're going to become overwhelmed mm -hmm. again, but to actually like stay positive and... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if the ones online connected heard the question. <laughs> Namrasa, have you heard? Saragrahi, Carolina, yeah, they heard the question. Okay, great. So yeah, this question is, is in the list of the top five of the most presented one, especially when one festival is just finishing. <laughs> so this nostalgia starts to linger. But I will say that, how to say, I mean, ideally every after every one of these meetings, what we should feel there is some development in us no? because if we feel oh now it's nice the festival is over everything goes back to normal as usual and every after year the same dynamics happening come ups and downs but we are never growing it means that shouldn't be happening it means you are not really taking advantage of this meeting so the point is if we really get absorbed in these meetings and i understand the cause of enthusiasm by concentrated focus in group i mean that creates a, a result and we are having a glimpse of what it will what it will be in in more committed stages of our practice because the point is if we get a glimpse of that if we get a taste of that we should start to wonder how can i adjust my life more to have more of those moments hmm? Somehow, again, not in a neurotic way, but in an intelligent and systematic way and with longing. How can I spend more time in this type of meetings? How can I make myself available for that? Maybe I have accepted certain commitments in life that do not allow me to be 24 seven in that dynamic, uh, but I, I shouldn't be discouraged by that. I should take responsibility for my choices and try to connect those choices with all these things as well. Because it's what I choose. No, I'm cho what I'm choosing. I mean, if you want to choose something else, the option is there. But we have chosen something. We have to be responsible. So I will say that if, if you are experiencing something beautiful in in some concentrated sangha, like the experience we have had these days or or, or these last times with many of you in Europe and other places, naturally the, the feeling instead of feeling oh, now tomorrow everything is over and I will go back to, no, ideally we shouldn't allow that to, to happen because if we are already allowing ourselves to feel that will happen, we are always already opening the door for that to happen. <laughs> we are already there. <laughs> no. Instead, we should try to feel, oh, I'm receiving such a new wave of inspiration that I, 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 I will try to maintain this as much as possible. And this is this inspiration is taking me to wanting to increase my commitment and my practice. Of course, not in a naive way, in a sustainable way, being realistic with all the other <laughs> duties we have in life, but also that flame, that longing has to be there somehow and not just entering into, oh, tomorrow everything goes back to normal and everything will be lost. Who knows what thing will. It means we have not really taken advantage of the experience because if we took advantage of this meeting, we will be fired up. No? So you have to do something with that fire, basically. So the point is, yeah, getting together with the local sangha and things and think, what do we do with this fire, this new flame <laughs> that is burning now? And, 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 and even if, if, if with times and circumstances in life, sometimes the flame may get a little bit diluted, and that time a new festival for sure will be there to make us again. But again, my point is not just the dynamic of, now I'm on fire and in six months I'm about to leave everything and oh, just the salu came again and saved me. And, and always is up and down to the same levels. No, every, every time we should be, should be increasing our inspiration and commitment. So the question is now, what do I do with this? No. What do I do with this inspiration, with this kataifer, with this experience I had, an association that increased my faith? I mean, 
And of course, I cannot reply that for you. This, this is something that we have to ask to ourselves very deeply and, and see what, what comes as a reply and how much do, you, do we want to, to embrace that reply and to gradually modify our life to get closer and closer and closer to that that we feel and know we would like to be in forever because to enter into a spiritual world basically means to enter into that dynamics with no return ticket ad infinitum, but it has a price. No? So the price is, has to be paid in the here and now, in the present moment. No? And, and, and gradually in our daily life, trying to get closer to that ideal and, and trying to integrate all the other complexities, non-integrated complexities, as we always say, to that higher ideal. So it's a, a nice time for reflection and introspection, and going deeper no? after being having experienced certain magical things, if you, you know. So what do we do with those epiphanies, with those revelations? No, no, not just continue my life as is normal. I say, oh, no, now comes the, again, the ordinary stuff back again tomorrow morning. It's not like that, but just how can I keep this, you know, protect this, nourish this, and, and, and keep in connection with the sadhus somehow or other. You know. It's, it's a form of union and separation, if you will. No? So the dynamics of separation, and now we are experiencing, uh, how to say, in, impending? No, well, it, it's about to come, impending separation from each other. <laughs> so it has a purpose also. It has a purpose, of course, to bring, bring us back in union and, and renewed joy, but also to invite each, each one of us to, to be thoughtful, and, and, and deep contemplative about what's that thing that we have experienced these days all together? What's the value of that? What's, which, what's the place for that in my heart? What will I do with that? And, and to think about that deeply, deeply, deeply. And we are, if we are really thinking deeply about that, when we get to that proper level of that, again, we are meeting each other. No. <laughs> no. In separation even, there is union in separation and eventually also meeting in flesh, if you will, officially also. But remember, there's union in separation. So that's, that's the challenge, no? Separation is coming. How to keep the union in separation? How to keep the flame in this particular current? And separation has the potential of helping us to internalize many things, meditate, go deeper into what ex we experience externally, if you will. Not external, it's internal, but in this particular situation, so what? where the event is no longer there with the devotees, each one is in their own place. Whew. Meditate and go deeper into what was that for me? What, what can I do? So, and pray and practice with renewed intensity and for sure some, some reply will come. And we will grow and we'll mature and the next meeting will be upgraded. The next one will be upgraded until we, there's so much upgrading that we will have to meet there in a place that corresponds with that level of upgrade which called Golok Vrindavan, Golok Navadiv, that's the ultimate upgraded <laughs> stage. No? And there's no end to that from now on. So that we are beginning all that journey together. It's part of the journey. It's not that one thing is here, another thing is there. It's, it's an organic journey that starts right here and goes right there. <laughs> so we have to conceive all this in, in such, a, such a glorious way. And we are part of that. So many things to to engage our mind and thoughts and emotions till we make the, this the Vaishnavas again, if you will. But the Vaishnavas are there. You have very nice Vaishnavas in your own house, so don't forget that. So Sadhu Sangha is always available if we, if we want. Okay. Hmm. So we are almost on time. I see that Namrasa sent me one question. I hope you may forgive me, Ram Namrasaji. I will skip your question. But please share the question in the thread in Facebook, and I will reply to that in these days, if possible. Because here we have also to, to leave the, I mean, to do some activities before closing the place. So I will close here the Harikata with your permission. I will do some brief Harikirtan and then share Bhagavad Prasad. So, Srila Gurudev Ki Jai. Shriman Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Hrinam Sankirtan ki jai, 
श्री हरि कथम बृथा महोत्सव की जय गोर भक्त वृंद की जय गोर प्रमान महाराज की पंच कल्पतरु विष्ठा कृपा सिंधु दान पवानी प्यु वैष्णवे नमो नम अनंत कोति वैष्णव वृंद की जय गौर हरी